AI is taking over sports. Analytics, fan experiences, refereeing, strength and conditioning, these are all being changed by AI and this AI technology that has really come to surface over the past couple of years. I spent the last year and a half studying large language models or LLMs to see how it is going to impact sports and specifically soccer, to see how this AI will be implemented into the game, how it will revolutionize old practices, old technologies. So to do that, I decided that I was going to create an AI football scout to see if I could replace the results results that teams were just using with traditional scouting to come up with a more efficient and cost effective way of still getting the benefits of traditional scouting. Scouting is really one of the key elements of running a successful team or a club. This is how you are going to be able to get players at either good bargains or get players that are really going to impact your potential for winning trophies, championships, leagues. The downside of scouting is that if you get it wrong, you can get it massively wrong. As we have seen in these past couple of years with teams misusing funds, misusing team resources, to get players that really just don't fit in the team. And with that, it doesn't just have a sporting impact, it can have a huge financial impact on the club as well. So that is why I wanted to be able to evaluate to see if an AI scout is possible and really if it has any future and can replace traditional scouting. So in this video, to see if it really can be that replacement, I'm gonna go over how I built it, and then we'll examine some of the results to see what it gave us, and then we'll see if AI can actually replace scouting in the future. With these large language models, there's really two methods that you can take. So the first route is going to be using open source models such as Meta's Llama 3, and this route offers way more customization and it can be substantially cheaper, but it is also much more complex to get up and running on your own, and sometimes you're going to need to have have the necessary hardware to run that. And so the other option is to use some of these pre-trained models and APIs such as OpenAI's GPT-4, which is what powers the almighty chat GPT. This route doesn't offer as much customization, but it does allow us to be quicker with our development and kind of test our idea. So for time's sake, we're just going to use GPT-4 from OpenAI to run this model. And because I don't really see myself spending a whole lot of money on this in the meantime, just to test and validate this idea, we will just use the thing that is quickest and easiest to set up. So I headed over to OpenAI's site, purchased my credits, and I was ready to go. But actually there's really one important thing with OpenAI's model, and that is it has a time knowledge cutoff. And at the time of recording this video, that is 2023, which means that the model was only trained and learned from data that was up until 2023. So it can actually not see anything that has happened within the past week. And so that means it does not have any data that is recent. And I'm sure you can see now why this might be a problem with using AI and these large language models to scout because we don't wanna scout off data from a year ago. We wanna get more recent and up-to-date data. So with this problem, I researched a couple of ways to figure out how to actually pull this off because we need current data. So after a little bit of research, I came up with the idea that we were going to just scrape data from a website called fburef.com. And then we would inject that data into the prompt that we are going to be using with this large language model. The downside is that's something that is going to cost me a little bit more, but that's something I'm willing to do in the short term to validate and test this. If you've ever wanted to learn the analytical or the technical side of soccer or football, I do have a course called the Complete Football Analytics course in Python, which teaches all the base and the foundation of what I'm talking about in this to be able to use Python to analyze sports and to analyze football specifically goes from gathering data to data visualization, data analysis, machine learning. You do a couple of projects. It's a really great course that a lot of people have enjoyed thus far. If you use code YouTube25, you can get it for 25% off in the checkout. So go ahead, check that out if that interests you, and let's get back into this. So at this point, I have my two things that I need. I have my model picked out, and I have a data source from FBREF. And now the fun part comes where we actually have to do the prompt engineering and really trying to test and refine our prompt, which we're going to use to guide our large language model. And prompt engineering is a very iterative process. It's not something that you're just going to get the first time because these models think differently than you and I think. These prompts and these models can be very sensitive. So it's a lot of back and forth of trying to find a right balance to be able to get the desired output that you want. That's really the basis of prompt engineering. It did take me a little bit, but I finally was able to get a prompt that I was satisfied with that was giving me a consistent output every time. So now we have the full flow of how we're going to do this. First, we will scrape the data. Second, we will inject that data into the prompt that we have crafted. Third, we take that prompt and inject it into our model. And then we're gonna take that output and put it into a markdown file, which will be considered our deliverable if we were an actual scout. So now let's go ahead and look at this AI scout that we have built to see how it does and evaluate its results. So we're going to be evaluating two different players, Lamine Yamal, who's a very young valued winger for Barcelona. And then we're gonna try and play a little bit of money ball and evaluate Nathan Broadhead, who is a forward for Ipswich Town, who recently just got promoted into the Premier League. So 
do this, let's jump over into the code in the Jupyter Notebook to see how this actually looks. So I'm in this Jupyter Notebook and it's actually very simple what we're looking at. All I'm doing is reading in OpenAI and then this is the data I need to scrape just Lamine Mall, his FB ref URL. So if we take this right here, we can go to this and I'll show you exactly what we're looking at. So we're looking at this right here. We're going to be taking these, this percentile data and we're gonna be injecting this data into our actual prompt. So we will define those actual values and then we're just using pandas right here to actually scrape the data. And then we're taking that data, we're getting some more metadata about the position, birthday, age, the team that they actually play for. And then we are actually going to go ahead and use the prompt. As you can see, the prompt is very simple. I'm just telling it, create a scouting report, give me a summary of their strengths and weaknesses, some data, and then it should return a markdown format for that actual scouting report. So I'll run this right here. And then if we create the prompt, let's print our prompt so we can see exactly what we're looking at. So it says, I need you to create a scouting report on Lamine Mall. He provide me with a summary of their strengths and weaknesses. This is the data, right? So we 16 forward Barcelona. And then that's that exact data that we scraped that I just showed you. And then I'm telling it, okay, give the output in this markdown format. So we are going to use OpenAI's model to actually run this against their API. So if we run that, it'll probably take a second because it is you know, it's a pretty big prompt and it has to create a pretty large output. And so once that's finished running, let's actually see what it said, okay? So you can print this and we can read that, but let's just, let's save that markdown file and let's go ahead and look at the exact markdown because it is a little bit easier to read. So I am actually using PyCharm now to go ahead and read this, but as you can see, it created a scouting report for Lamine Mall. Strengths is at high creativity and playmaking skills. So he demonstrates strong capabilities for setting up goals, which is true evident from his high percentiles and expected assists and shot creating actions. And then defensive contributions, despite being a forward, he does usually drop back and play. Dribbling and take-ons is probably one of his better skills. And it says his excellent performance and successful take-ons uh, highlights his skill in dribbling. And then it goes over his weaknesses, so his aerial duels. So his effectiveness in aerial duels is very low, which you know kind of makes sense. He's 16, he's not the tallest player out there, and he still has a lot of room to grow there. Um, progressive passing, which kind of makes sense as a winger, you're most likely not going to be making a ton of progressive passes. So that's something that we could use to actually refine the model. And then goal scoring consistency, which actually I find this interesting because he is very low in goal scoring uh, percentile. And it is because in La Liga, he really just hasn't finished a lot of his shots, but he has hit the post a ton of times. So it's something that, you know, could be worked on for him. And I think if he kind of figures that out, he could end up scoring, you know, 15, 20 goals a season in a couple of years, maybe next year. Let's see what the actual summary says. It says, Luminium Mall is promising young talent with a unique blend of offensive creativity, effective dribbling. And then it says, while his goal scoring consistency and aerial ability could use some enhancement, his overall contribution in creating and setting up play, along with his substantial defensive metrics, make him a valuable asset. So it says he can impact both offensively and defensively and potential growth in goal scoring could be a beneficial addition to any team looking for a dynamic and versatile forward. So we do know that Lamine Mall is probably not going anywhere because Barcelona rate him so high. So overall, I feel like this did very well at understanding what his weaknesses and his strengths were. So now let's come back up here and we'll look at Nathan Broadhead and kind of get his evaluation as well. So come back, just uncomment that out and let's go ahead, we'll scrape everything and just run everything through. Okay, and we'll save the file into PyCharm. This will take a second. Okay, so that is now done. Let's go ahead and let's go look at the actual markdown file for Nathan Broadhead. So it breaks in his strength, scoring ability, shot volume, and as well defensive contributions um, for an attacking player. And then weaknesses, it says he's not very good at creating for others and he doesn't have as much involvement in build up play and his progressive playmaking is also a weakness. And it says Nathan Broadhead is a dynamic forward midfielder known for his exceptional goal scoring ability and regular shot taking. However, his ability to, con to contribute through team play through assists and progressive actions is less impressive. So then down here, it says that he could be a beneficial addition to teams needing a proven goal scorer who can independently create chances. 
but might not fit as well in a system that relies heav heavily on intricate build-up play or collective attacking movements. So that's something very interesting that it's saying what type of system he would benefit from, what type of system he would really flourish in. And if you don't play that system, then it kind of makes sense why you wouldn't actually recruit him. So overall, these results from these large language models were actually thoroughly impressive given the limited data that we actually gave it. And I like to think when I'm sitting and thinking about AI and the future of scouting and AI and the future of football is that AI necessarily won't be the thing that replaces jobs or traditional scouting, but rather it's going to be somebody that is leveraging and using AI will be the one to replace the traditional scouts and the traditional methods that are being currently being implemented at even some of the largest clubs. It was able to take just simple data and turn that into a digestible format and a digestible, and it had really good reasoning based off the data that it was given. I liked how it was able to give it the type of system that a player would fit into, what type of system it wouldn't fit into, strengths, weaknesses, right? Obviously though, it wasn't perfect because of this limited data and because of just the limitations of AI and large language model. To improve this model, we'd actually wanna include a ton more variables and a lot more data. These include things such as like market value of a player, get more physical data of a player, and then we'd normalize the stats based off their age, and then as well start to incorporate things like event data and tracking data to get shot locations, to get you know tackles, and really just any other data points that would be useful for traditional scouting. And really where I see this AI football scout being helpful is to sift through a ton of players and a ton of data. Like I imagine this in the future and this type of method as being able to run, you know, hundreds or thousands of players through your AI scout. And it comes up with, you know, the top 100 that could benefit your team. And then from there, you can use more traditional scouting methods because scouting can be very expensive. If you're having to send scouts, you know, to foreign countries, having to pay for their salaries, and then you're having to pay their expenses while they're gone and it can just really add up. So if you can eliminate that type of stuff, you'll really be saving on costs and as well, you'll be saving a lot on just wasted time because time is money. In my opinion, AI will definitely be a part of scouting here in the short future. And really it wouldn't surprise me if it's not already being used by most of the top clubs in the world. And with these AI models starting to become more available, we'll start to see even more ideas and more evolutions of this concept being played out and being integrated into teams. And so really if this video got you jacked about learning AI, you're going to need data. So if you're going to learn how to scrape that FBRF data, go ahead and click this video here and it will take you to a step-by-step -step process of scraping data from fbref.com.